Hi, this is Coach Colette, and you are in for a treat. We just recorded our first live podcast event. It was a Coach Chat Live with my guest, Ashley Wisdom, who is the founder of Health in Her Hue, and we chatted all about Black women's health. So I am really, really, really happy to share this episode with you. It is a great time for you to think about your health. And in particular, if you are a black woman, to think about how you stand in terms of some of the health issues that we talk about in this episode, including high blood pressure and fibroids. And if you are an ally, I want you to think about how you can help us to continue to elevate and create more visibility for this discussion on Black women's health. So, also, we want to give a huge shout out to Young Boss Media for producing this event. And be sure to check out the show notes for a link to the YouTube video so you can actually see us in action. All right. Are you ready? Listen up. So hello everyone. Hello. hello. How's everyone doing? Great, great. Good to see all of you. So welcome. My name is Coach Colette and I am the host of the Start Within podcast and I am so, so, so excited to welcome you to the first live podcast event for Coach Chat Live. So woohoo! Thank you everyone. <laughs> And I'm really excited to welcome my guest on Coach Chat Live, which is Ashley Wisdom. Hi, everybody. And Ashley is the founder of Health in Her Hue, and we're going to talk all about black women's health. And I wanted to give you a little bit of more information about what Health in Her Hue does. So Health in Her Hue is a digital platform that actually connects black women with health care resources, services, and providers that are committed to, I'm going to say our, right, to our health and well-being. And it also seeks to empower us and our allies to really be able to learn, share, and innovate around health issues that disproportionately affect us. So let's welcome Ashley to the Coach Chat. Thank you for having me. Oh, it's my pleasure. So how did we get here? How did you, was this an idea that you had to start Health and Hurt You? Yeah, so literally um, I was in grad school at NYU and working full time. And uh, the place that I was working in was very toxic for me as a black woman. And then, so dealing with that and then being in grad school and learning, I was, I was pursuing my master's in public health, so I'm learning all these things about health disparities and seeing all the statistics about black women and then experiencing a toxic work environment at a leading healthcare institution and seeing like in person what systemic racism actually looks like. And I just felt activated to do something. I felt like I'm seeing firsthand what I'm learning in this very academic space and what I'm reading in these journals what can I do to bring awareness to this issue? What can I do to help black women go into healthcare um, op- providers, offices with their eyes wide open and knowing that, you know, some of these providers that you go to aren't, think, you know, they don't have your best interest in mind. And so you need to be an advocate for yourself. And so that's the place where health in her hue was derived from. It was like my own personal experience, um, trying to leverage my academic experience to help the community, but that was ultimately the space that I, that right. I was coming from, yeah. yeah. I mean, so we know that you, your qualifications are awesome and stellar, you know, Howard grad, I don't know if there are any Howard alums in the room, yes? <laughs> um, and also your, your MPH, 
And and so I think, hey, uh, <laughs> I think it's it's awesome that you're bringing your expertise and your um, background and your passion to to this issue. So thanks to the Start Within team, we did we did our homework, and I want to share some stats with the audience to give a little bit more context about why, not that we need to, but why why there is the reason for health in her hue. So. Um, black women are three to, four, three to four times more likely to die in pregnancy. We are three times more likely to have fibroids. We have a one in nine chance of getting breast cancer, and we have a one in 31 chance of dying from breast cancer. Um, about 56, 57 percent of black women are above their uh, natural or normal body weight, which is in comparison to only about 38 percent for black men. So there's definitely an increase there. And on the mental health side, which is uh, the issue that's a passion for me, um, we have a consistently higher feelings of sadness, hopelessness, worthlessness, and everything feels like an effort. Can, does anyone feel any of those things? Yeah, yeah, me too. <laughs> so, so I think that it's an opportune time for you to have started um, this venture. And I was excited to learn that HUE is actually an acronym. So can you let our audience know what HUE actually stands for? So when I was thinking about the name for Health and Her Hume, I'm laughing because I see my little sister in the audience. But I remember I was in bed and she happened to be um, spending the night with me. And I was in bed and I was like trying to think of this, the name that I wanted to use for this platform that I was creating. And <laughs> I think one of the names that I came up with was, it was very corny. Um, can't think of it right now. But I shared it with them and with her and my brother. And they were like, yeah, that's not it. That's not it. That's not it. <laughs> and so I was in bed on my iPhone in the notes section just thinking about, like, how can I infuse, like, health and then, like, color. I wanted that all to be a part of the, the title. But I also didn't want to just use hue because I felt like that was also kind of cheesy and, like, cliche. And so I'm like, okay, if I'm going to use Hue, it has to have a purpose behind it. And so the Q actually stands for, I'll, I'll say the full name, so it's Health in Her Heard and Understood Experiences. So that's what the Q stands for. And that's essentially what I want the purpose of the platform to be, is that I want to create a space where black women's experiences could be heard and understood, first by us and then by the community um, at large. And so that's, that's how I came up with the name. Yeah, yeah. And naming is so important, right? It is, because it is. it's part of putting words to an issue. And so that sense of understanding is what really jumps out at me, right? That sense of mm -hmm. do our healthcare providers understand what we are exactly. going through? Exactly. Yeah. Do you find that that is an issue or a problem for us? Yeah, so I think um, as provide like no shades of providers, but I think a lot of time clinicians get caught up in the clinical aspect of care mm -hmm. and without taking into account all these other social things that are impacting black women in particular and how those things impact our health. And so when I use the word understood experiences, I really wanted to like capture that, that there are other aspects to black women's lives outside of our physical being that needs to be taken into account when we're sitting in that cl um, that clinical room. So like dealing with microaggressions at work or in um, in the in school like in, in college I'm sure a lot of us have experienced microaggressions in various spaces that we've been whether it be shopping in the store and you have somebody following you around thinking that you're going to steal all those different things that we in, uh, experience day to day as a black woman and that's like scratching the surface. I'm not even going into the deep stuff like where you were educated, like the community that you were born into. All those things are impacting our health and we really need providers to think about that and have those things in mind when they're interacting with us as they're um, caring for us. Mm -hmm. And so I think I know part of the answer for this, but why was it important for you to create this community for black women and by black women? So I think black women often kind of get, well, not think. We get left to the wayside a lot of times. Um, we get discounted, we get overlooked, or we get lumped together with all women of color. And the latter isn't too bad, but at the same time, like as black women, we deal with very specific issues that 
are, you know, very specific to us. So, like, dealing with the intersection of race, sexism, um, racism, sexism, classism, like, sex dealing with our sexual orientation. We have so many different things that are related to our identity that requires a specific it requires like us to to address it specifically so not just like kind of like putting a big blanket over our issues but addressing it head on and so i didn't i was very intentional about making the space for black women because i think we need spaces that are specific to us and not and that's not to say that other people's issues aren't important that's not to say that our issues are more important than other people it's to say that we deserve to have spaces where we can just talk about the things that impact us and only impact us because no one else is doing it and so that's why I wanted to create a space and I knew no one else is going to be that intentional about saying black women it's very easy to say women of color it's not always the most politically correct thing to say black women and I think that a lot of the issues that we're um, experiencing warrants being addressed specifically. Mm -hmm. And do you think, did, did that cause any challenges when you decided, okay, I'm standing up, this is a platform for black women by black women. Did that cause any, do you think, additional challenges on your founder's journey, would you say? Oh, absolutely. <laughs> like, <laughs> I've had men say, what about us? I've had people talk about um, reverse racism. So there are all those things that I, I anticipated coming up. But of course, when you see the comments, it's, it's, they're frustrating. It's like, okay, I'm, every time black women create a space that's dedicated to us, everybody wants to be a part of it. But nobody wants to create spaces that address the issues that are specific to us. And so it's, it's been frustrating at times having to defend the purpose behind me being intentional about naming black women in what I'm doing with Health in Her Hue. But I've just learned to keep true to like, the purpose of why I created it, um, there, you just read off a bunch of statistics that validate the need for a space like this. And so it's just been an internal, not struggle, but I've had to deal with those um, arguments internally and just like remember that I can't get sidetracked by that. Mm -hmm. I don't have to constantly get caught up in defending why I'm doing this. I know that there's a purpose behind this. I know that it's needed. And that's where I choose to focus my energy. Mm -hmm. So how do you not get sidetracked? Because I mean, as, as any founder here or myself knows that it's so easy mm -hmm. to get sidetracked and now it's almost like adding this extra layer of challenge on top of it. Mm -hmm. So how have you been able to stay on course or stay aligned with your intention for the platform? Every so often I go and I look at the mission and the vision that I created and that centers me. Um, so when before I la before I launched the website, I was like, okay, I need to think about why I'm going to push go on this. I had to be very clear and explicit about the purpose behind this platform and my vision for it long term, so that it can keep me activated. And so every now and then, when it's like when I'm tempted to get sidetracked, um, or when I'm discouraged, or when people ask me questions that make me think like, am I am I crazy for creating this space? It's only for Black women. I look back at that mission and vision and I rem remember that night in my bedroom where I was like, I need to do this. And that's what helps me stay focused. Mm -hmm. And what has been the reception for this platform so far? It's been amazing <laughs> and, and surprising. Like it, it's awkward to say surprisingly mm -hmm. so because I know that it was needed, but I didn't think people would have responded to it as much as they and as well as they have. So it's been it's been exciting it's been frightening to be very transparent mm -hmm. but the the response to it has been overwhelmingly great like almost every day I go on the health and her hue Facebook or Twitter page I have someone either DMing us or leaving a comment saying that this is like this platform is needed mm -hmm. or when I'm writing papers your platform is one of the first places that I go to even before I go to the academic journals just to know what are the things that black women are actually talking about what they're concerned about so there's definitely like a great community response and that is what keeps me um, amped up and mm -hmm. going. And so that's, I'm, I've read a lot about the services and the resources, and then is there also an intention for the connection, connection with actual practitioners and providers? Yes, so that is a work in process, mm -hmm. um, but we are being intentional about our mission and our vision and saying that we're connecting people to providers. So every month we have a newsletter where we feature a black female provider 
and um, it's centered around a specific health topic. So that's like step one. Um, we have black providers and healthcare professionals who are writing content on the site. So that's another, we have their bios, we link to their social media. So that's another level of connection. And then trying to also build this tech um, factor into our t tech piece to it, where we're working on an app where it'll be easy for black women to easily search up, uh, put in your um, insurance company, put in your location, and connect with the black providers that are in your um, geographic area. So that's something that's still, we're still building on that. Um, and then in terms of connecting further, the next iteration of Health in Her Hue is creating a space where black providers, clinicians, or healthcare professionals who've identified different pain points in the healthcare system, they can submit them, and then we want to com connect um, black women who have ideas and solutions to build, build, essentially build solutions to address those particular pain points and problems, and then the ideas, as black women, we're creatives, we're like very talented, build those apps, build those solutions, whether they're technical or not technical, and then find fun found funders who can help us bring those ideas into the real world. So that's how we're trying to do this connecting piece with Health and Hurry. Wow, that sounds amazing. And, and I'm, I hope you'll keep us posted on like the next iteration Absolutely. and let us know when the, when the app is, is live. So I want to switch a little bit to you and as a founder. So founder mm -hmm. to founder. Um, mm -hmm. So how do you nurture your own health and well-being? Hmm. <laughs> so I saw so it's like layered. So I definitely the physical piece. I try to work out. Um, and that's always a work in progress as you're like, you're busy as a founder. I'm, I, work, I have a nine to five, but I'm also building health in her hue. So it's not always easy to make time. But my whole platform is about prioritizing health and wellness. So <laughs> I've been trying, I've been doing better at carving out time and being intentional about scheduling time to work out. Um, the other pa factor is like mental health. So I take time to really just unplug and like, I'm, I'm an extrovert, I love to socialize, but then there are moments where I'm just like, I can't see anybody right now. I just need to go in my little corner and just be by myself and just do me, and that's another way that I practice like self-care and just trying to maintain my health. Um, also making time to spend time with my friends and my family who help nurture my spirit and my soul, and mm -hmm. then last but certainly not least, my spiritual, um, the spiritual side of me. I make sure that I pray. I make sure I make time to, um, you know, just spend time with God because that keeps me centered. And so doing all those things are the ways that I like basically help maintain my physical, mental, and spiritual well-being. That's amazing. Um, yeah, and I think that for me too, it's, uh, I feel like it's like, how do I walk the talk? Because mm -hmm. I also, we have a self-care challenge, right? So it's it, that's one of the ways that I'm like, oh, wait, I need to do, do this. Do it yourself. Not just promoting it or sharing it. So exactly. thank you for that. Um, I wanted to loop in our Talk Back Tuesday. This is, this is the Coach Chat meets Talk Back Tuesday. So the question was, do you have a community? So I'm going to presume the answer is... Oh, yeah. Yes. Yes. So I guess who is on... I, I, I always ask it, like, who is on your squad? So who is in your community of support? that you can reach out to when, when times get tough? So I definitely have a great close-knit group of girlfriends who, like, we meet up once a month um, for Girls' Night In or we meet up for brunch and we just kind of, like, chat, debrief on life, um, vent to each other about work, who's getting on our nerves, all of that. So I would say my core group of um, girlfriends are part of my squad and then my family. So, you know, like this past weekend I went hiking with my family and they live upstate New York now so it's, they're not always very convenient to, to see, but just spending time with them was like refreshing and um, it helped me recharge and mm -hmm. just spending time with people who you know genuinely love you and support you mm -hmm. that is something that's very important to me. So mm -hmm. I would say that that's that's my squad. And I have other people who I know who like ride for me as well who are part of my squad. But mm -hmm. I would say the core group is like my core group of friends, my family, and then also my church. I grew up in church. So my church family is also a, a network of support that I tap into from right, time to time. Right. Because I saw the one of the, a couple of the quotes that you shared on the platform today around this, around the fact that you know, social networks and community and friends are really important to our health and well-being and yep. how the numbers are actually going down, down that mm -hmm. people have fewer people on their squad, if you will, or in their community, and that's impacting our health, right? Right. 
And so the, the article that I was reading um, that kind of inspired that question was talking about community care and not just self-care and the importance of us. Like, I don't think we always think about like, how our community has, um, it impacts basically our, our health at some point. So when you become sick, who are the people that you're tapping into? I had a ses- did a session recently with a group of black women, and they were talking about, like, you know, who after giving birth to, um, I've never given birth, so I really don't know what that experience is like, but the postpartum experience and having people come to your house to see you and to help, you know, basically look after you now that you have this new human being that you now are responsible for. And if you don't have a core group of friends or family to come and support you, and a lot of people don't, how that impacts your ability to like become a good mother, like, to be a mother, to take care of yourself first and foremost so you can be a good mother. And I don't think we, I know I personally haven't really thought about the fact that I take my community for granted a lot of times. But if I were, when I saw that, when I came up with the question, I thought about it, I was like, yes, I do have a community where if I were to get sick, if something were to happen to me, I know that there would be people there that I can tap on to like do certain things for me Mm -hmm. and the fact that some people can't say that they have that is it's very disheartening Mm -hmm. and so I wanted to kind of bring that to people's attention and think like hey if something happens to me or if I'm feeling down do I have someone that I can hit up really quickly to to say like hey I need someone to to vent to I need someone to talk to or like I'm literally sick and can't get out my bed can you go and get me food those are some of the things that we don't always think about very specifically but we should probably take them into consideration right 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 and it's and the challenge is because when we're in that situation of that like oh I need help or I'm sick right that's the hardest time to right. try to find those people right, right? so and that's when you recognize if you really have those kind of people in your life exactly exactly yeah. so somewhat connected to that I know we've talked about it a little bit um, off air but one of my intentions is around disrupt strong so my hashtag disrupt strong to me means about how we can disrupt the strong black woman narrative. And so I wanted to talk with you about that and get your thoughts on the narrative and also in particular, I guess, A, connected to this community, Mm -hmm. and then I guess B, also connected to how that impacts our health. So what are your thoughts on the strong Strong black black woman narrative? So I think historically, black women have felt the need to like just to be strong and we actually had to for our families and their a lot of systemic issues or things that factored into why we kind of had to step up and take on that role. And we're still dealing with a lot of those systemic issues, quite frankly. And so a lot of us still do feel the need to be that strong black woman for our family, for our friends at work. But I do think we need to, not think, we do need to actually think about the ways that we are the areas in our life where we don't necessarily always have to show up strong and embrace that embrace the fact that vulnerability that acknowledging the fact that you're burnt out that you're tired is okay like you can still be a strong black woman and acknowledge the fact that at some point you have limits mentally physically and so um that's that's kind of like the perspective that i take is like how do we as black women we we can stand in the the pride that we have in having to have overcome so many obstacles and um just basically barriers, but taking the time to think about those times when we don't have to show up strong and being intentional about being vulnerable, being intentional about taking time off and like, and communicating when we're like feeling overwhelmed and things like that. Mm -hmm. Like, like the fact that no is a complete sentence. Exactly. (laughs) Exactly. Uh, But that's easier said than done. It is. And I think, uh, and, and I guess in terms of the health impacts, like what are the consequences when we, we when we live out the narrative, would you say? So there is a professor, Dr. Geronimus, our, our line, Geronimus, I think she's a professor at the University of Michigan, and she has this theory called weathering. And it basically talks about like how toxic stress starts to, how it causes black women to basically deteriorate over time physically and biologically and so you don't always see the effects outright but then it leads to certain things like we've been seeing um, like Serena Williams and Beyonce and most recently Allison Felix who are black women who are athletes or dancers who are working out all the time nearly dying after giving birth and so this theory speaks to the fact that 
you can be the most healthy black woman in terms of like physical stuff, um, have all the access to the best resources, to the best doctors, to the best food, and still ex have a near-death experience doing one of the most basic things that women do is giving birth because of the constant stress that we as black women experience and also internalize. Right. And so that causes, that, that necessitates us to have a conversation about where, what are the things that we can do to basically not, to the point that I was making before, not always have to show up strong, but there are also certain factors that are out of our control. Like we can't, we can't stop racism, we can't stop sexism, and those things are impacting our health, but I think the thing that we can do is bring these issues to light right. and, and challenge challenge the systems that are basically negatively impacting our health. Right, right. And it goes back to that self-care and communi community care that you were talking about as well, right? So like we can't, we can't control the other person and their reaction. So when we have a, experience a microaggression, but we can, con we can control how we process it and let it go and, and aim to not internalize exactly. all of the negativity that's coming towards us. Right, exactly. Yeah. That's amazing, yeah. Um, so one of the questions that I ask all of my guests on this podcast mm -hmm. is, uh, what does start within mean to you? Starting in. So I would say starting within means doing the inner work to learn, to evolve, and to grow. Um, and asking yourself, like being patient with yourself, but asking yourself the hard questions that um, basically are necessary to, to grow and become your best self. So it's a it's a twofold thing of being um, perceptive, being, um, what's the word that I'm looking for? Being intentional while thinking within yourself um, and essentially being being open and free to, to basically challenge yourself when you see that you're like going in the wrong direction or to like celebrate yourself when you've seen growth. Yeah. Um, so that's, that's what I would say starting within is. Yeah. That's amazing. And I love, I love all of what you said. And I, and I love that last part about celebrating because I mm -hmm. think sometimes we, particularly, I don't know, as founders, like, you know, you're always so far, you're always thinking so far ahead. Right. And how do you celebrate the small wins? Right. And I think so one win we can celebrate is that Health and Her Hue is having its one year anniversary. Great. So can we <laughs> So you are well on the journey of helping black women to improve our health and well being. So I'm so excited that we had this conversation together and I'm sure that there are people in the audience that want to learn a bit more and ask some questions. Sure. So we'll uh, open it up for Q&A if people do have questions that they want to ask Ashley or ask myself. And we've got the microphone here. Hey, it's Coach Colette. What do you think of the episode so far? What are your main takeaways? Before we jump into the next segment, I have a question for you. What's at stake for your health if you continue living your current routine? The thing is, we get so used to doing things in the same ways. We're actually more afraid to make changes than we are to live out our worn out routines, even if they are causing us to feel ill, stressed, or overwhelmed. Can you imagine what it would be like to wake up in the morning and not have it hurt when you get out of a bed and to feel excited about your day? It is possible when you start within, and I'd like to help you to do it. 
You can visit my website, startwithincoaching.com, and at the top, click Start Here to schedule your complimentary activation call. We can talk about what's going on in your life right now, how you are in your health, and where you would like to be. So go to startwithincoaching.com and click Start Here to start your journey within. Does anyone have questions? So kind of like coinciding with what you said earlier about there being an increase in black women having fibroids, um, that's actually like something that is like in my family. Is there a specific reason why that's so like prominent? Is there like, you know, a health reason? So I did some um, research on that and there actually isn't enough research as to why black women are disproportionately impacted by this issue of fibroids. Some researchers have pointed to chemicals like getting relaxers, quite frankly, um, but there isn't any hard evidence that can point to a specific thing, uh, but that was one of the things that I saw. Um, to that point, the fact that there isn't enough research on fibroids is a problem, and so that's something else that I want Health and Her Hue to be a, a space for. It's like we need more clinical trials, focus on the issues and the, the clinical and health issues that impact us specifically. Because fibroids are disproportionately affecting us, people aren't necessarily going to prioritize funding studies like that. But the more that we bring attention to that, the more that we have these conversations in public spaces and in private spaces, behind closed doors with the people who are making important decisions, is the more that we can advocate for that. Because we do need to figure out what that is. I think as black women, one of the places we can start is having the conversations with women in our family. So if we find out that we have a fibroid, um, go home and ask your mom or your aunties, like, did you experience this so you can recognize if, it was, if it's like family history? Um, but the long and short of it is that there isn't enough research to really point to a specific thing. Mm-hmm. Right. And, and that was going to be my point, right? The fact that we don't have the answer, exactly. right? So that sense of how do we elevate issues of black women's health to be a priority. a priority, to be something that there is interest in researching and learning more about. Exactly. Mm-hmm. And then to build off of that point, um, and I don't want to hog up the Q&A session, but to build off of that point, um, a lot of these clinical trials are not, they don't include us because there's a lot of distrust in the black community with the healthcare system, and rightfully so, just given the history. But there is a need for us to be involved in these clinical trials because these doctors are actually making clinical decisions based on studies. And if we're not in these studies, those studies aren't reflective of how they impact us. And so when we go into clinical settings and doctors are prescribing certain medications, so some of the questions we should ask is, like, has this medication been tested on people? Like, are there studies that are representative of the, um, the community or the, the population at large? Are there side effects that are specific to people of color? Like, asking those very pointed questions because a lot of these decisions are being made based on studies that don't involve us, and that's a problem that we have to address both on our end of getting more involved in these trials and also the medical, um, the medical field's part in helping to create that trust so that more black and brown people can feel comfortable enrolling in clinical trials so we can get the answers to these questions. As a young female, how do you feel uh, a young girl should go about maintaining her, her health as becoming a, a woman? So I would start with, I would say start with having very candid discussions and conversations with your provider, with your doctor. Ask all the questions there that you want to ask. Like if you are curious about something related to health, before your next checkup, Google, look it up, and then be prepared to have that conversation with your doctor. One, it shows that you're being intentional about your health, which will then hopefully cause your doctor to see that this person is being very proactive and I need to like step I need to make sure that I show up um, on par with this for this um, patient so I would say do your own 
research, do your own digging on the things that you're curious about. Um, have conversations with the women in your family to know what are some of the things, the health issues that have come up with other women in the family that I may need to be aware of so I can be proactive about taking care of my health. And then I know right now birth control, um, I, I heard someone, had someone share a story that she was just kind of like prescribed birth control without any context, without any information, without the options that she had. And that is a problem. As, as young black girls, we should know what our options are so we can make conscious decisions and not just have this doctor making that decision for us. Um, because to, our, to the point of like creating health in her hue, a lot of these providers are not, let me not say a lot, some of these providers don't have our best interests at heart. And so we need to be aware of what they're prescribing us. So I would say like on our, as a young girl, start to find information that you're curious about, start there, start asking questions with your family members, and even have conversations with your friends. Like what are your friends talking about or what are they like dealing with? Um, so you can start to think proactively about the things that you may need to be considering. Um, so I know like in my family and actually a lot of um, like friends that I know who are women, um, I kind of hear what sounds like chronic pain a lot, like, oh, I always have back aches, and I always have, like, shoulder pain, and I always have all this, you know, pain, which, you know, sounds kind of crazy, but um, it's typically dealt with, like, oh, you know, that's just getting older. Um, from your perspective or the public health perspective, when is it an issue and when is it actually oh that is just getting older so I would say any pain that's causing discomfort to the point that you can't do your basic life functions without like just normally that's something that you should be bringing up to your provider and being very intentional about like this is this is disrupting my ability to live like a whole healthy life um, because there are studies that show that doctors don't um, take our pain seriously as black women. So one, we've been kind of normalized to, to, like as you said, to rationalize why I'm experiencing this pain, like come up with all these different reasons as to why. But if it's really interrupting and disrupting your like ability to do your day-to-day -day activities, it's something that you should bring up to your provider and say, very pointedly that I need, like I'm dealing with this pain and I need you to take it seriously. So like, how, let's figure out what's going on here. We should not take any pain that's going on in our body, like treat it like it's nothing because one, you know your body more than anybody else. So if you're experiencing pain that's out of the norm, it's definitely something you should be paying attention to. Like when is it happening? Is it recurring consistently? And pay attention to that so that when you do speak to your provider, you can say those specific things. But as black women, I think we should be more intentional about paying attention to the pain that we experience, both physically and, of course, emotionally. But definitely paying attention and bringing it up to our providers when, when we notice something like that. Right. And I think it is interesting to think about right the things that we think are, oh, just part of getting older. Right? Yeah. It's, it's not necessarily that that's the case. And, um, for me, I also think about diet and nutrition because a lot of people have changed their physical well-being just mm -hmm. by changing what they eat. So, and I think, and in our community, that's something that, you know, we are starting to look at in terms of, you know, how can we make the foods that we love in a healthier way uh, mm -hmm. so that, uh, because sometimes, I mean, I'm not a doctor, but that sense of like pain and inflammation being very linked and so mm -hmm. looking at sugar and salt and all those kinds of things. And I would definitely agree around the tracking, like when does it happen? Right. Uh, and the same thing with mental health, right? Like what, what are the triggers that make you feel a certain way and being able to track at the same way that you track your physical health? How you guys doing? Um, I just want to know: um, Does Health and Her Hue plan on hosting any more informative, informative events such as this, like this year or early next year, or like health fairs and stuff like community-based stuff that can get a group of people together to really learn about your business and also learn about what you're speaking about? <clears throat> 
So that is definitely in the plan. We did our first event partnering with this amazing um, company, and I'm going to plug them real quick. It's called, or initiative, the Renee. And so she, the woman who founded it, she is a um, product manager, so she works in the tech space. And what she's been doing is applying this design thinking approach to the maternal mortality problem, which I think is absolutely genius. And so she happened to, I reached out to her because I saw a Fast Company article featuring her. I reached out to her. She happened to be in New York. I happened to have a space for us to put on an event, and we made it happen. And so in that event, we basically had black women come together, um, specifically around the issue of maternal mortality and maternal health. And um, they, we had a design thinking session, like a sprint, where they talked about their pregnancy experiences. Some of them spoke about their miscarriages. And then as they shared stories, we then thought about pain points, like what were the pain, or like the problems that we identified in them sharing those stories, and created amazing solutions um, from, in that session. And so I want to host more events like that, where I can bring black women in a room talk about these issues and think about ways that we as a community can create these solutions for ourselves. And so the, answer, the short answer to that is yes, um, but that would be the purpose behind convening an event um, for Health and Her Hue. That's fantastic, and I'm, I'm excited, and I'd love to know more about those events, and we'll definitely make sure to share them with the Start Within community, Thank because you. I think that what you're doing is awesome and fantastic, and just doing a scan. Do we have any other questions before we do our wrap? All right. Well, I want to thank you so, so much for, for being on this first Coach Chat Live podcast event, and I am, I'm really excited by what you're doing, and I, and I think it's so important, and I love that you're taking the stand for black women's health and, and being intentional about it, so thank you for all that you're doing. Congratulations on one year anniversary. Thank you. Thank you. And I want to thank all of you all for coming out this evening to support also the Start Within podcast. You can learn more about what we're doing at startwithincoaching.com forward slash podcast. And you can definitely subscribe to hear this episode and other future episodes. But until then, I am Coach Colette helping you to start within to finish strong. Thank you.